We've waited 33 weeks for this moment right here. The USL Championship playoffs are ready to rock and roll. I've got Scott Stewart, Kelsey Steele here to break down the 2019 bracket. And Scott, this one is going to be fun. Scott's going to take the Western Conference. I'm going to take the Eastern Conference. So what do you say we just kind of get into it? Let's do it. All right. So we're going to start over in the play-in games. Sacramento and New Mexico United. Scott, where are we going? The darlings of the USL will <laughs> not advance. I'm going to go Republic FC. L let me explain. Okay. I know it's a little bit controversial. I think New Mexico is great. I think they're a lot of fun. I think they're too inconsistent. I know Sacramento, when you talk about consistency, has been consistency poor out of the last like five-ish games, but I still think the home team, I think they've got plenty of firepower. I think Ina Voltson, Kamawasa, they're going to be able to boost that side. I just, I have to go with Sacramento. I think it's a natural cause for the first one. This one was a little bit easier than this one. Uh, no disrespect to LA2. I think bold FC. I mean, I think they've got what it takes. I know that they are also a little bit inconsistent when it comes to results, but I think come playoff time, they've got a squad that's going to be resilient. They've got a squad that is hungry to fight for more. And I, especially given recent events, I think they're going to want to really up themselves here. So. It was tough, but I, I think we're going to have uh, seven and eight going forward. What it's, do you think? It's funny here, right out of the gate, you point towards inconsistency. And yeah. like we talk about how difficult it was for these play-in games and, and to nail down those last like three-ish spots in the Western Conference. I, I feel like that makes perfect sense moving into the quarterfinals. Yeah, and I tried to not think about it too much. It's one of those like March Madness things where I'm just mm -hmm. like, if I just breeze through this and go with my gut and gut said sack, gut said Austin Bold FC. So that's where we're at. What do you think? All right, so in the Western, in the Eastern Conference, we'll start off with North Carolina and Birmingham. This one hurt me emotionally a little bit. I, <laughs> Ooh, I, I'm intrigued. Now. I wanted to go Birmingham. I did. Um, they are. They don't have it for me right now. They've scored four goals in their last eight games offensively. It's just not clicking. And I think Austin Deleuze isn't done. I think he's got one more in him. Um, they're going to at least send him into in the playoffs, and then you know we'll get to to where that goes in the quarters. But um, yeah, I've got I've got North Carolina moving forward in that one. That same time on Wednesday, we've got Ottawa in Charleston, which is a little bit of an interesting matchup. Two very different styles of play as well. But, I mean, you're going the young gun making his first ever postseason appearance against a club in Charleston that knows a thing or two about uh, making the postseason. So I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm going with uh, the guys who have been there before and when I'm going Charleston. So we're all set here in the Eastern Conference. Take us back over to the West. So we've wow. got quarterfinals here, and uh, we'll start up top there with, with Phoenix and Austin. Love you, Austin. This was a no-brainer for me. I think Phoenix Rising, mm -hmm. it's difficult to go against the champions of the regular season. Um, I have absolutely no reason to believe that even over their last four or five games that they've shown anything other than we're going to make a run, and it's going to be a deep run. So little tease there, but I think uh, Phoenix Rising over Austin was a natural one. Going down to Monarchs OC, this one was difficult for me. Not only because I believe that Orange County just has something a little bit different about them. I think Aiden Quinn is somebody you never want to count out. He's a playmaker. He's a dude who helps that side churn. I think Michael Seaton's been incredible for them. Harry Forrester on the score sheet over the weekend. All of that said, I'm going with the home side, Rail Monarchs SLC. They love Zion's Bank Stadium, as they've shown as of late. I think Douglas Martinez is in fine form for them. And although we don't always look at form, this is going to sound a little weird, although we don't always look at form as a natural indicator of how a team's going to perform in the playoffs, I think not only them being at home, but just the way that they've played recently. I think they've just got an extra little bit of a pep in their step. And so I think we'll see Phoenix and, and Monarchs in the, in the semifinal. I think that's an interesting pick, too, because, I mean, obviously, you know, they're the four seed, so... If, if you're going numerically there, obviously that you know they would be the ones to go forward. But I would almost cap that as an upset if the Monarchs in, move over. Orange in County. some ways, and especially when you look at the Monarchs' postseason history, I mean they've not shown up. I think the last two, three mm -hmm. years when they've been counted on. So um, Monarchs, don't let me down. We're here for you. Uh, moving down to the bottom two. I love what head coach Mark Lowry's done in El Paso. Mm -hmm. I think they're a really special group. I think I was way too high on them early in the season, and that's not anyone's fault but my own. And Jeff Reuter. And Jeff. It's, shout out, Jeff, for everything you've done this year. I've got to go against myself early on and against Jeff. I'm going with the Foxes only because I think what Adam Smith has put together is, has been remarkable for them this season. We've talked multiple times on Steal Some Time about the difference between last year's Fresno team and this year, the defense. The amount of goals that they've let in has significantly dropped. El Paso hasn't exactly been lighting up the score sheet, so I think Fresno at home going to be able to get what they need to uh, head to the next round. 
This one was tough for me too, though, just because. No disrespect to Sacramento, I think they're a great side, but the way Reno's been playing, Corey mm-hmm. Hertzog has been absolutely on fire. I think they also have, Reno also have a couple players who maybe don't get the credit they deserve. Maybe some unsung heroes are involved in that group. And so despite them being the two seed, I think that I'm going to go with Reno 1868 FC. Not really called an upset because Reno's been very consistent all year, but maybe just not the side that a lot of people would pick to go as far as I have. I think that this one's going to be a lot better of a game than a lot of people are anticipating in these quarterfinal matchups because you have a Sacramento side that really kind of fell under Mm -hmm. the radar last year. I mean, we all kind of expected them to make a little bit of run in 2018, and they really just did not do that. Um, So I think they get past that play-in game and, and get on here. I know you have Reno, but I think that is going to be a really interesting matchup because I think Sacramento has something to prove, and I don't think they're done yet. It's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Pause. Okay. What do you have? Eastern Conference. We'll just start up at the top here. Pittsburgh and at Charleston. I mean, I don't think there's a a lot to be said here. Uh, I'll go with my biggest point is uh, Pittsburgh's never lost at home this season. Are you worried slightly just given Pittsburgh's performance in Birmingham, which was great. They outshot the Legion FC. Trevor Spangenberg had an incredible game for the hosts. But are you worried that Pittsburgh facing a team as defensive-minded as they are in a team like Charleston might hurt them? No, I'm not concerned. Um, They were at Birmingham. Fair. And we talk Fair. time and time again, and it's going to come up time and time again as we're going through this bracket here, how big of an advantage being at home is. And I think that this is case in point. And I think when you look at these two sides, Pittsburgh just outpowers Charleston. I, I don't think that uh, their back line is going to stand a chance with the Nico Bretts and Dos Santos. So I've, I've got Pittsburgh moving on into the semifinals. I don't even want to say anything. (laughs) (laughs) Just take it. Louisville, Tampa Bay. Why you got to do this to me? Um, This one is going to be fun. Um, It was a really difficult one for me to pick solely because I I want to think so highly of the Rowdies. I really want to believe that they can do what they have been able to do in past years and finally get a push going in the postseason. Their run of form recently isn't doing it for me. Losses to Hartford, losses to Loudoun, Ottawa, in times where you need to be in good form and when you need to be proving that you should be in this top. I mean, a few weeks ago, they had the ability to be in that top three. And, you know, with their loss this past weekend, they lost a home playoff position. I mean, that's that's massive. For a side that historically hasn't been good on the road, they've obviously been a little bit better this year on the road, so I will give them that. But you have a Louisville City FC side that, doesn't lose at home in the postseason. Frankly, has never lost 10 wins at Slugger in the postseason. We're going to Louisville. Mm, Yeah, I don't hate it at all. (laughs) The only question I have is, do you think the Rowdies might be the best without our championship guru, Nicholas Murray, here? Do you think the Rowdies might be the best fifth place finish in championship history? Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Yeah, because that could have been anyone in the Eastern Conference. And we're talking top seven, top Mm -hmm. six. Um, It's hard because I know about three different Tampa Bay Rowdies team in the 2019 Mm. season, you know? Um, So they've really pulled on my heartstrings this year. And um, and we've talked time and time again about the Eastern Conference just being a really difficult place to to get a grasp on. Um, I'm going with what I know and I'm going Louisville. Hard to go against the champs. Moving down, um, this one is actually a lot more difficult than you would have initially uh, expected. That said, I'm going Indy. Mm. Um, I think that New York is gonna give them a run for their money. I think that if roles were reversed and we had New York hosting Indy, things would be very different. Mm. Indy is moving into Carroll Stadium for, for this, uh, this postseason, and Martin Rennie even said this past weekend that it's going to be an even more intimate setting, and I think that's going to play a huge role with this Indy side that fans just show up for this side. Um, on top of that, I just think that that, that front line there is just going to be way too much for New York to handle. Indy, moving on. Last but not least here, probably the easiest one for me, to be honest. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm going Nashville. They're taking this one. Pretty, pretty easily. Um, I. You were so high on him up here. So Deleuze's run ends. In I Nashville. just think that what's happening right now with Nashville, it's, it's, you can't, you can't put words to it. Um, I think that they are the 
Pittsburgh in mind, I think they are the most dangerous mm. Eastern Conference side moving in. Pittsburgh and Nashville, they're just very different in terms when you, when you speak about dangerous. I think that North Carolina is just it's not going to be able to handle what Nashville's throwing at them offensively. And you got Matt Pickens there and in between the the post. I just I don't I don't see that moving any farther. So we've got our top four here. And what do you know? Top wow. four? Top four. It's almost like the home teams might have an advantage. Weird. Take Strange. us through the semifinal, Scott. All right. Again, Monarchs, no disrespect, but and now, granted, they have been one of a few teams that have had Phoenix's. I don't want to say Phoenix's number because I don't think anyone's had Phoenix's number. I think they might have had like the whole six. I got six digits. I was <laughs> one away from having the full number. <laughs> Couldn't close. Couldn't close. I'm going Rising FC um, again. I, I don't think this needs a whole lot of justification. The group and the run that Phoenix has had so far just leads me to believe that this is a natural Western Conference final team. This one was where I had a lot of fun, mainly because I just talked Reno up so much. I'm going with Fresno FC and Adam Smith Ooh. again. This is probably a, one of the controversial, if maybe not my only, maybe not my only controversial pick outside the one that yeah. won't make people happy. <laughs> again, I just think Fresno has something about them, and mm -hmm. they could prove me. They could prove me wrong instantly, and they could go down to El Paso. I could see that being just as likely as Fresno seeing themselves in the Western Conference Final. But this is what I want to see: two teams that really don't like each other. Fresno with a couple penalties to stop Phoenix Rising's win streak. I think this is the tastiest matchup we can provide. Love that. Tastiest. I, it's hard for me to argue with that one there. I think that we've been pretty heavy on, on the Fresno horse this season. Um, and I mean, taking, Fresno, or taking Phoenix is not really a, a bold choice by yeah, any means. So, so, so yeah, we've, we've got Phoenix and Fresno there in the, uh, the semifinals, which, which would be a re really fun matchup. Yeah. We'll wait, though. We'll wait. Over in the Eastern Conference, I might turn some heads here with this next pick. So we've got Pittsburgh and Louisville, two sides, obviously, know each other pretty well. Again, you have Pittsburgh at home, which means a lot when it comes to this club. Louisville has never won a, a postseason match away from Slugger Field. Mm. That's an interesting note for me. All of the stats here point to Pittsburgh. I've got some fun for you here. They are significantly better home than away. Pitt, dominant all the way around. Doesn't really matter. Um, I think that when you look offensively, they've netted the same amount of goals this season too. Every single statistic points to Pittsburgh taking this one. But for me, these guys have been here and I've got Louisville going. Um, I know that this is a uh, it's one of those moments. That's a pick, Kelsey. I know. That's a pick. I know. It's one of those moments too, where I think where you have every like, you you want to you're in a relationship and you just want to be with this one person and he's like he's a bad guy, right? And he's like every <laughs> single sign points to you not wanting to be with him. But you gotta go I, with you, him though. The, my gut tells me Louisville. I think that they deserve a little respect too. Pittsburgh? No, Louisville, Louisville deserves yeah. a little respect just because, like you said, they've just they've got a group. They can do it. I think that they have done kind of what they did last year and were like a little bit like this all through the season, and I think they're going to show up when it comes time. We've talked about their records after August and how dominant they've been. Um, over 30-plus wins career-wise after August. Oh, boy. Um, That's I a just, lot. I, I, there's something special, and I, I just don't think they're done okay. just yet. Okay, I like it. Okay. Um, my only question for you is, are you going to stay awake? <laughs> That's just mean. Yeah, I think uh, this one's going to be an, uh, an interesting matchup. I'm taking a totally different um, standpoint for this one than you would, might expect as okay. well. I think this is going to be overwhelmingly heavy Nashville. Mm. I think that Nashville's going to come out of this one 3-0. Wow. I think it's going to be offensive power because this is an indie side that just flat out doesn't do well on the road. And I think you've got a, a side in Nashville that's, that's hungry for this matchup here. I think that you need Dean Kelly to be going. And frankly, that's just not happening right mm -hmm. now. Um, it, to counter what this defensive line, and I'm sorry, the Golden Glove winner has put up here in Nashville, I just don't think that Indy's going to have the offensive prowess to, to take Nashville down. So 
yeah, um, I, I, I've, I've got Nashville moving forward with this one. Do you think they're going to open up Nashville and play like a more expansive style mm-hmm. in the playoffs than maybe we've seen in the traditional regular season performances? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I, I think that Nashville is going to surprise us in a lot of ways when it comes to to this look here. I mean, a number two seed isn't any secret. Like this club's owned this spot for a reason. But I just think they're going to throw something different towards Indy than that that side has seen this year. So yeah, whether that's opening them up a little bit more breaking down that back line, I I, I, I think it's, it's a no-brainer for That's me. That's a great final, too. I yeah, love I love this. We'll get back to that. Yeah, let's, let's just get over to Phoenix here. and Fresno. Um, I think Phoenix is so ready to stick their hands in the mud <laughs> and just pull out whatever comes with it. Again, I hate to just completely discredit the opposition, and I'm not going to, but I'm going to go with Phoenix. I just mm-hmm. I think this is going to be a great game. I think it's going to be gritty. I think Fresno is going to show up and be a very aggressive side. I think they're going to take it to Phoenix in every way, shape, and form. I can't count them out. I just can't count out Rising FC, and I don't think they've given me a reason to this year. Um, welcome back to another championship final, Phoenix. So here's my question. They get to this point here. What if this goes down to PKs? And we've seen this recent, um, whatever weight you want to call it, uh-huh. um, this this issue happening with Solomon Asante at yeah. the spot. Is is there any concern here with you or them not taking chances when they're given to them? Postseason's different. There's no draws here. You know, this is this is game over. When is Phoenix going to be able to to rise in a situation like this? No pun intended. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest, I really don't think any of these are going to go to penalties. I just think okay. that we're, we're in a situation where somebody's going to find a way to win. C.J. Cochran versus mm-hmm. Zach Lubin, both of them are incredibly talented goalkeepers. I think I might give the edge to Zach. That said, Fresno obviously converting their two penalties against Phoenix. I think if it does go down to penalties, we'll be going down to the absolute wire. Mm-hmm. Like maybe the, the last kick. I have confidence in Solo to break whatever duck he has on his back right now. I would take Phoenix in any situation. All right, so no surprises here. We've got Phoenix working their way down into the championship game for the second straight year in a row. But we got to talk about this Eastern Conference final matchup because when I'm looking at the bracket, this is my most anticipated matchup for the entire postseason. Listen, these are two sides that freaking want this. And guess what? They played two weeks ago, and that felt like a, a postseason uh, conference final, type, whatever you want to call it. This has all of the marbles in it. And they each took uh, 2-1 in their meetings this year. So you kind of can't really put their, their matchups this year into this scenario. But I'm telling you, what I felt rewatching the match highlights two weeks ago in this game I am so stoked mm. for this matchup. And that's how confident I am that this matchup is going to happen. I think that, I know, it, this is, it's really difficult. Never met before either. Never met before in the postseason. In the postseason, which is, which is interesting. So you've, you've got a lot of things kind of weighing on this. I think that um, when it comes down to it, you've got to see this back line show up because this, this attack is not wasting any time. Um, these have been two very, very offensive-minded, offensive-heavy teams. They are really going to be pushing in to, uh, in, in, into the back and really kind of testing what these goalkeepers have. I'm, I'm so stoked. And I think when it comes down to it, I've got to go with my Golden Glove winner. I think that he has shown time and time again that he's the best in this league and he has roasted the occasion and I think his stats speak more for it and when it comes down to it, he's going to shut out this Louisville City side. Can I put you on the spot just a little bit? Minor okay. question. Okay. Does Cameron Lancaster score a goal for Nashville? No. No? Mm-mm. Rios? Um, I've, I, I've got Rios. I think it'll be interesting who plays that second because it's kind of been other other than Rio's it's kind of been like all over the place mm-hmm. in terms of who's going to step up but that's the same thing with Louisville they're mm-hmm. all over the place in terms of who steps up which makes it added some some extra uh, you know finesse on this game here there's it really is who's going to capitalize on their chances because both of these clubs are going to get a ton of shots that's no question they're they're both very offensive minded but who is going to follow through who's going to capitalize on their opportunities to me, I think that's going to be Nashville. I like it. I like it. All right, final. Heading over to our final. Listen, this is, uh, I don't think there's, there's a ton of surprise here. Obviously, the Western Conference, Phoenix Rising, people have them going all the way. That's no questions asked. This might be a little there's a bit of a surprise to some people. I think when you have these two going, there's, there's one team that's going to take the cake, and that's going to be Phoenix Rising. Wow. 
All right. And we both agree on this. If this, we do. If we this do. matchup presents itself, ah, oh, Phoenix Rising. Um, if if there was a different Eastern Conference team here, Scott, does this change things for you? A little bit. Okay. Probably a okay. little bit. Um, I see this as sort of sort of what we saw in the League One final: an incredible attacking team against an incredible defensive team. Mm -hmm. It's really tough to pick, but if I have Phoenix at Casino Arizona Field and it's for a trophy, I'm picking Phoenix. I think that, that that home field advantage is something that Phoenix is thirsty for. They've been very vocal about wanting it, and I agree. I think when it comes down to it, you just can't take Nashville over Phoenix in this final. Do you have a final score prediction if this one does come? 2-1. Um, 2-1 two one. Two one Phoenix. 2-1 two Phoenix. Yeah. All right, guys, it all starts Wednesday. We've got four play-in games, and then the rest of the scene is set. It's going to be a really fun one before we crown our 2019 championship title winner in November. <sighs> Scott, I know uh, we're... Don't let us down. <laughs> Don't let us down. It's a lot coming on here. And listen, you can also fill out your bracket. So it's super exciting this year. All fans, whoever it may be, you can fill out your own bracket. Go to uslchampionship.com forward slash bracket hyphen challenge. It's going to be a fun one. We are going to see you guys in November and see if our picks play out right. For Scott Stu, I'm Kelsey Steele. Thanks, guys.